All right. So Daryl Henderson, 21 years of age, will be 22 when the season starts. 5'9", 200. 200. Thick framed for being 5'9", 200. I like, looks looks meaty out there. I like that. Does look strong out there. Uh, there's been some really fun skill position players coming out of Memphis. Anthony Miller last year. Uh, you got Henderson this year. You got Tony Pollard this year, who's an interesting kind of all-around skill player. And then they got another running back there, Taylor, who's no slouch coming out uh, probably next year. So interesting uh, bunch of players over there. And Memphis are doing a good job of getting skill positions. The, the offense is very interesting. Mike Norvell is doing a great job down there of creating a uh, multidimensional offense as uh, an article that I read by Jay Jordan. He, you can find him on Twitter at jisu 31 uh he basically was saying how uh, at the it's a multiple offense but at its heart it's a vertical rpo offense there's significant use of misdirection interior running horizontal passing and in general terms the memphis offense stretches the entire field to maximize stress on the defense um, and then he said conceptually you can think of this scheme as oklahoma and oklahoma state kind of mash up um both elements of both teams are present in the Memphis offense. Um, and to make it more difficult, Norvell will run every concept, every different concept in every game um, and use the variance to set up the dagger plays. So they're stretching the field, doing a whole bunch, giving you a whole bunch of different looks. He says he wants smart football players over there uh, so they can all do a, a multiple of different things. They kind of have the hold the player, hold the card up kind of offense. And they do a bunch of different things out of a bunch of different sets, a lot of jet sweeps trips on one side then they'll go heavy package run a toss you know kind of kind of just all over the place they're basically like he said stretching you out stretching the making you use every bit of the field so it's really hard to defend them and they've done a pretty good job of that and right. daryl henderson has really reaped the benefits maximized his uh, opportunity there with the space that was created for him he's definitely a good fit for for, for what, what you just described for sure led led the ncaa in rushing yards per attempt with 8.9 uh, tied with two other running backs, second in rushing yards with 1909. Um, 22 TDs. 22 TDs, which was tied with Devin Singletary for second in the NCAA. Uh, he only had 213 attempts to gain that 1909 yards. And the guy in front of him, Jonathan Taylor, uh, he did. He was the leader with 2194, 2194 yards, but he had 307 attempts compared to Henderson's right. 213 attempts. So impressive what Henderson did, and a lot of people are getting really hot and bothered about uh, Henderson. He's going to be one of those guys who everyone's going to lose their noggin at the uh, combine if he tests off the charts. And all oh, Henderson's shooting straight up the board. He already is shooting up the board, and uh, so we're going to talk about what we see with Daryl Henderson here in our second set of breakdowns. You definitely get the sense that people are behind this guy and the hype is building. And when you have a, a, a yards per carry average for your career is 8.2, you can kind of see why. Sure. You got to love the 63 catches over the span of three three years. Not as definitely. many as, Not quite as, as David many Montgomery, as Montgomery but, but strong to quite strong. I think it's a very good aspect of his game. Um, when you read through the Roto World blurbs, it was like it was almost like a drinking game. If they didn't use the word electric in it's the blurb, electric. then boogie, it didn't boogie, count. Boogie. So uh, every single blurb is just electric, electric, electric. <laughs> which I mean, he is. When you watch him on the field, it's it's pretty outstanding. Would you uh, the say way this guy can move? There's electricity in his veins. I don't know about that, but he definitely is fast as shit. Would you? What's the over under on him having a lightning bolt tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> one i don't know <laughs> well a half is that how you do over unders you gotta have a well you would a rather it not land on a push yes yeah exactly um you know i don't and, and as big co would put it he's a glider he glides he's he's very he's glider. he glides just he just looks very smooth in what he does um and and you mentioned he doesn't quite have those workhorse carries i i, I have smooth yeah smooth well, you can't get workhorse carry numbers if you take it to the house every play. Like he's, true. A, he's a drive killer. He true. is a drive killer. He's he's zapping everybody else's fantasy stats on his team because 
My man's running it in from 50, 40, 60, 80 right. yards out. So there's, and, and it's, how many carries can you get if you just ran it for 70 well, yards? And also to that in one to, carry. to that point, there are uh, other playmakers on this offense. Mm-hmm. And Brady White, who is the quarterback who took over this year, was a transfer uh, from Arizona State, which is where Norvell was from. And they kind of already knew each other. And he knew all the verbiage already from what uh, uh, Norwell or Norvell or whatever, you, however you pronounce it, from Arizona State came over. Uh, so that Brady, the quarterback fit right in from Riley Ferguson from being there last year. So that was a huge advantage for them. And then, like I said, Tony Pollard Jr. is a great playmaker. He all around uh, good player. And they have two two good running backs there and, and a, other good receivers as well. And a good tight end. It's a good offense. Magnifico. It looks even better That's when tight ends. Name. <laughs> <laughs> That's strong, strong stat there. Uh, let's see. He aver- in in his sophomore year, he averaged five point six yards after contact, which that's another thing that gets people all giddy is the yards after contact. But I will preface it with saying that's not a Josh Adams type of yards after contact. It's more of a Rashad Penny type of yards after contact where he gets, you know, someone swipes his foot and he doesn't lose his balance and he's off for seventy yeah. more yards. That really brings your yards after contact Do average. Do I sense up. some hate, Jay Wayne? I, I did want to come in here and hate just because, you know, when everybody likes something, I just want to not like it because everybody else likes it. You want to it. be contrarian. Right. But, uh, I mean, I had to I, I put a lot of lot of time in. There's not a ton of games you can watch on this guy. Not but a, Not a ton cut up. And, well, not many people are video in South Alabama and Mercer games. So that's yeah. true. That's true. Uh, I mean, he looks he looks amazing out there, but it's like it's t- it was tough for me to get caught up in it because, you know, I don't know that if – I don't know if I feel comfortable with him banging it through the tackles. I don't that, think that would that, be I'll, that would be the one thing that you don't really. There's not a lot, whole lot of tape of evidence of saying that this guy can grind it out, right? And be your be your banger here. But then on the other hand, like maybe that that's not what he needs to do. Maybe I'm I'm wanting too much out of that, right? Uh, because I don't think he needs the workhorse type carries to still have an impact for sure, you. Sure, and I and I think that will be kind of the role moving forward in the NFL is saying, you know, I don't need this guy to carry the ball. Number one, he can hit a home run anytime he touches it, it looks like. Um and yeah. two, there's good there's some PPR floor, so he doesn't need to be in a workhorse role right. to have value on your um uh, fantasy football team and then with the PPR floor, I mean I do I, that is a big aspect of his game that I, I enjoy. Um you know, you were mentioning maybe not a ton of catches that you can see in like I think it's five games you can find. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when he does get it, I mean, he, it looks pretty fluid. It looks pretty smooth. There's a bunch of handsy catches. The routes aren't always like the most crisp, but he's open because he's so fast and he, he gets open. And, and there's then, a lot to cover on that. True, and it's very spread out. Um, but I mean, it's it's handsy catching for the most part, and there's there's some good ability out of the slot, and he's, you know. Si- He's always running routes. You know, he's never asked to yeah. pass protect. Well, there, and again, there's not a lot of pass protection looks on him, and it's I couldn't really find very many. And he's just not asked to do that. He's he gets out in space when it's time to. He'll chip a little bit here and there, but you know, so he's probably not a great pass protector. I can't say that for sure because there's not a whole lot of tape for me to watch on that. They're trying right. to use him, uh, yeah, not have him block. He, I'll, I'll. I'll defer to Casey and kind of breaking down what what's so good about his running style and and how how he does it when he's doing it but it's it's not it doesn't take a lot to see to be intrigued about his explosiveness but then it's like you look I did some research into the teams he's playing and what where they ranked nationally amongst best run defenses right Mercer not ranked in the top 130 Navy 106th Georgia State 124th South Alabama, 103rd. Tulane was the best rush defense he went up against. They were 51st. And this is going based off of rushing yards given up on the year. Connecticut, 130 out of 130. UCF, they played them twice. Total defense was pretty good, but run defense is 118th in the country. Mm -hmm. Missouri, 19th. So there was the best, which I don't even, I think he missed that game with an injury. Um, So you didn't even get to see a ton of him in that game against the best uh, run defense that, that the team played uh, East Carolina 69th Tulsa 119th Southern Methodist not on the list Houston 96th and then again UCF so it's just there's nobody that you can really say okay yeah circle know, this one it's not like Benny Snell every week is going in there doing it against top-notch talent this guy 
Memphis just didn't play anyone. Right. So it's tough for me to jump on the bandwagon <laughs> right. and we, full fledged. And we did this a little bit with Rashad Penny last year because <clears throat> Rashad Penny was getting a lot of hype and we weren't as high as most people were on Penny. Still thought he was a pretty good player. And, you know, we kind of did the same thing and, and threw out some, you know, teams that he played against. You did. you did that. Yep. Um, I've used it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's you know and the thing that we said with Rashad Penny was when you are facing those teams at least you're obliterating them so that's what you should be doing which he does um which he did so that's so that's a good point so that's a good part you of that see him dominate but, but he was running through some cavernous holes and um you know so take that for what it is but there there are some good points to his game and you know averaging nine yards a carry is is ridiculous it is um and again, there's only four or five cut up games to watch out there, so there's not a ton of tape on them. Which is surprising to, to me, but I guess you might get a little bit more here um, as things go on. True, we're very early into this process, but I mean, the burst and the explosion, right? Yeah. So the explosive, ex- explosive at multiple levels is is what I like. Game breaking ability for sure. Uses his leverage well, so when he does get to contact, sometimes. Uh, when you when when that is available to see on those cut ups, I think you know you can being shorter, you can use that as an advantage in this aspect where you can get a pad level pretty low and and you know run over some guys, which um, is there sometimes. He will get smaller com- compact and run through some narrow passages. Um, I think he has good pad level when contact is going to be made, uh, making kind of defenders glance off of him without much loss of speed. Um, I know again, there is some massive holes here, uh, but and not the best defenders and not the best defenders. Um, I think his spatial awareness is, is awesome. I think he takes good angles and uses good angles. And in my opinion, this is what really stands out for me. Uh, something that I really like. Uh, I think this contributes to his big playability pile on his explosiveness and the fact that he never gets caught up trying to string a bunch of moves together uh, and uses angles as he goes through the second and third level. Uh, is a very good combo platter of abilities or traits for a guy with with uh, that kind of top end speed and explosive explosiveness. And again, I like I like the fact that he's not a dancer. Yeah. Um, there's there's not a whole lot of juking, spinning, cutback, jump cuts on his tape to really watch. And some of that is because he is again. I don't sound like he's run through some big holes, um, but he does have good agility. But he doesn't get caught up trying to shake everyone like some of these guys with really good agility. Like we're going to talk about Justice Hill. Um, and kind of similar player and maybe similar role when he gets to the NFL. Uh, but Justice Hill will get caught up in a lot of cutbacks and moves, whereas this guy doesn't really do that. And yeah. I, I like that. Like there's He's not it, putting it, on a dance party. It's a small, quick juke and then a decisive get-up field. Um, I think... Yeah, there's very little gear down ever. Right. So I think the speed and ability after he gets through those holes, making it to the second and third levels defenders miss, goes back to him not getting up caught dancing around uh uses not a ton of east to west just plants and, and gets up um so a lot of the times he doesn't even really break down when he's uh getting upfield to those multiple levels it's just kind of a slight change of direction and going back to using those angles on the second and third level to set up his defenders on where he wants to go he's got enough speed he can just kind of lean one way and get the defender going that way and then he doesn't have to lose any speed breaking down and doing any cuts when he gets to the point where the defender to be because he set up a good angle yeah. to take and, and use his best attributes, which are his speed and his explosive yeah, agility. I'm, I'm seeing him use the, he's got really, really quick feet when he's trying to, it's not really breaking down to make a move. Right. He's his feet just keep moving so quickly. Right. He's, he's made a move without really making a move, right. which doesn't really cost him a ton of speed and, and doesn't let that defender close the gap. Well, when you're as a defender and you see this guy coming towards you, you're like, Oh shit shit like how am i gonna how am i gonna catch up to this guy right like, you see guys just straight up turn around and run the other way like, the other, like with him like they're running with his, their back to him to just try and figure out how to get an angle on him because he's so dang fast right now i don't know if the long long speed is as fast as i think a lot of people had him pegged at like a four four five low High four fours kind of guy, which which, which is fast. It, that is, fast. but it seems like he's faster than that within conference, a twenty yard yeah. conference USA. Yeah. But well, you see on the big plays, there's somebody coming and closing a gap. They're just too far away. Yeah, and and that what that there's your point on your. He's it's not like he's running a four three 
and he's blowing you away on the on the law on the last the twenty last yards. 20, right. But he's made so much distance on the first twenty yards that it's probably all you need. He's so. rolling. So I do I do like that. I set out and I was not like the first couple times through the tape of Daryl Henderson. I wasn't just not that excited about it like i was just like "Ah, these are kind of big holes he doesn't seem to really be doing much and then you know as i kind of kept going back through it and doing some research and you know re-watching and re-looking at stats and re-looking at articles and all this other stuff i I started to kind of come around to the fact like i don't i'm I'm not going to have him as high as everybody else i don't think and I, i do think that the combine will be huge for this guy but people are just going to lose their shit i don't see him at the NFL level, being a, a workhorse guy, like I, I, he's going to be a make your make your day in one play kind of guy. But it's it's okay. Like I, I'm okay with putting a guy like this on my team, who I don't need 20 carries from him because he can hit a home run, and and there is a PPR floor built in for him. So that's that's fine with me. Like the, the running back class isn't the strongest it's ever been this year, and this is a guy who could be very useful to your fantasy team given the right landing spot, like it, given the right scheme. I, I, a lot knows. of Reddit, everyone has them on the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, if this guy goes to the fucking Chiefs, sign me up. Right, exactly. Yeah, sign anybody. me up for anybody that Andy Reid selects. Right. Well, right. that's kind of what we were talking about with uh, Damian Damien Williams, Damien Williams mm-hmm. last week and why it's worth the risk, but you know, to me, there's some good traits here. I, he's, I don't think he's a banger. I don't think he's your workhorse. Uh, it's just a lot of long runs, which long runs are awesome. Don't know if that'll translate. It, it, I think it can, and yeah. I think he's electric enough. That and I do could. like that he's thicker framed for 5'9", 200. He looks meaty out there. Like He doesn't look like he's going to break. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be hard for me to draft him because he's probably going before I'm ready to take him. Is what I'm. I that feel could be like a fair point, and happen. if he lights up the combine, you know, maybe maybe so. If he gets in a good landing spot, elevated even more, and then maybe I would be a little bit more interested in taking him a little higher. Um, but I'm not. I don't think currently. I don't think I'll be reaching up high where some people have him as like the second or third back. Right. You got Benny Snell or Daryl Henderson. Um, I don't know. What? I mean, that would be a a real quick. I I like what Benny Snell has, and I like his transition from NFL to to uh, from college from college to NFL a lot better. And I I think there's a lot less question marks, but he needs to be in a role where he can be the guy. Henderson doesn't necessarily need that to be uh, fantasy relevant. Right. I don't know that he can be the guy. Snell could get drafted into a spot where that question's easy to answer, and Henderson could get drafted. I like Snell as an NFL prospect as being the guy way more than I like what's happened, you know, with the profile of Henderson. Like I love the explosiveness and all that other stuff, but I just, I don't see him as a workhorse at the next level. Right. Could I, be completely wrong though. I'm, I'm with you there. And, uh, I mean, I, it's a little early. We don't have to make, make any ranking calls, but, uh, Definitely just wanted to come on the mics, talk about what we've been uh, looking at for the last few weeks. Rookie talk, rookie talk, rookie talk, rookie talk. Yeah. Well, let's get into some Justice Hill. What's better, Christmas season or rookie talk? Um, <laughs> Mr. J. Wayne. <laughs> rookie talk. Rookie talk. When it starts off, at the end of the rookie talk, I'm like, oh, my God, can we stop talking about rookies? But right now, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting, and it's we're fun. figuring it out and yeah. getting in there. So, all right, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with some uh, Justice Hill. For your pleasure. 